Did you know that Rick and Morty would not exist without a Bill Cosby parody cartoon? I'd like to explore and I'll get into stuff. Maybe I can look around, you know, Rudy. I assure you, this is real. Now let's talk about the tale of the House of Cosbys. Justin Roiland is a writer, director, voice actor, and animator, and guy who generally looks like Louis C.K.'s nerdy son. He was also born in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Just like me. Aren't I cool? Roiland grew up in Manteca, California, which, oddly enough, actually went to a water park in that same city. Manteca water slides! And after graduating high school, he went to Modesto Junior College, a community college. Seems only fitting he would go on to work with the creator of the show Community, then but that would still take some more time. In 2003, however, he did make the big move to LA. And it seems his timing was perfect since there was an up-and-coming short film festival that would change his life. This was Channel 101, the creation by Dan Harmon, the community guy I mentioned before, and Rob Schraub. Harmon and Schraub had previously worked together to create the Sarah Silverman program, along with, of course, Sarah Silverman. And I'm not saying this is like a positive thing, just maybe something on the resume you might be familiar with. Channel 101 actually started as a film challenge between some friends in 2001. Schraub invited several buddies over to watch the film Jaws 4, but also asked them to create a short film predicting what they thought would happen in the movie. This party idea was a hit, and next year three more challenges would be assigned. Word of mouth about these films actually spread so wildly that a living room would no longer contain the audiences that wanted to attend, so the back room of a nightclub was occupied. And as interest in viewership grew of these shorts, so did interest in participating. And now other filmmakers were asking how they could get into this festival and where it was. In 2003, Harmon and Schraub decided to finally give this festival a name. The Super Midnight Movie Show. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's just that it sounds a little bit too much like the Super Mario Brothers Super Show to me, but the name just doesn't really fit. If you're not watching the Super Mario Brothers Super Show, you're gonna turn into a Goomba! And obviously they felt the same since they would soon change the name to Channel 101. And instead of just holding it once a year, they would now hold it once a month. Additionally, rules would need to be put in place to help weed out the lesser submissions. Now every month, 10 shows would be presented and voted on by the audience, with the top 5 winning a primetime slot on Channel 101's website and being invited back to present a follow-up episode. The only rule for Channel 101 is that your short cannot exceed 5 minutes, and that's how the format has remained since. Once Justin Roiland got to LA, he was able to land some work on reality TV shows, but as you could probably guess, that wasn't what he truly wanted to be working on. He wanted to make comedic shorts with a sci-fi twist. Hmm, big shocker. So in his free time, Roiland, along with his roommates Savan Najarian and Abed Geeth, would create their own comedic films. I think I got those names right. They had been submitting multiple pilots to Channel 101 since 2003, but none of them actually really took off. Then, one day in 2005, originating from a joke between Roiland, Abed Geeth, and another friend of theirs, Stephen Chun, of doing hyperbolic and satirical impressions of Bill Cosby, would Roiland be inspired to write The House of Cosbys. Don't get me wrong, I do know that Bill Cosby is a sensitive subject. If you aren't aware of who he is, Bill Cosby is a stand-up comedian and actor formerly known as the Father of America, mainly due in part to his character's portrayal on The Cosby Show. But after a clip went viral of comedian Hannibal Buress mentioning Cosby's long history of S.A. towards women went viral in 2014, the public quickly and rightfully shunned the monster. But House of Cosby's was made back in 2005, so Roiland and his friends were all still fans of Cosby. Despite how they may be portrayed, all the impressions were meant to be in good fun. That old saying of imitation is the greatest form of flattery. I just want this on the record because it will be important later. So, I could tell you what the show's about, or I could just play the theme song to do it for me. He was a Cosby fan at heart, it's clear. He searched and found a Cosby hair. He spent ten long years and built a cloning machine. And now he's accomplished his wonderful dream to make a house of Cosby. It's a house of Cosby. Ah, you can already feel that partially improv Justin roiland -ness, huh? So yeah, it's about a guy who lives in a house with a bunch of Cosby clones that he's made. But there's a catch. You see, Theo, each Cosby is getting worse than the last, you see. So you do get some pretty out there versions that we're about to bring up. Justin Roiland was the main writer behind this thing. And since he does the voices for Rick and Morty along with a plethora of other characters, you'd be right to guess that he has a few voices here too. In the first episode, he just did voices for Curiosity Cosby and Data Analysis Cosby. Their powers upon arrival were like nuclear weapons in the hands of children. 
With Curiosity Cosby, he kind of gives off a mix of Morty and Mr. Meeseeks, especially when he says, like, I'm, I'm Cosby. I like to explore the house, you know. I will go around the house. I'm Curiosity Cosby, you see. I'm Curiosity Cosby. Dear God, this has to stop now. The main character, Mitchell, is voiced by Jeff Davis of Whose Line Is Anyway fame, but he also voiced Victor Frankenstein from Mary Shelley's Frankenhold for my animation fans out there. Abed Geith voiced Butt Naked Cosby as well as Help Produce. I fuck naked Cosby. Fun fact about him, Dan Harmon and Geith actually went to college together. That's probably how Royland found out about Channel 101 actually. And yes, he is who Abed from Community is loosely based off of. Here he is in Community actually talking to Abed as a character. The team recruited other participants of Channel 101 to provide voices for House of Cosby's, but most notably would be Steve Agee. He was a this guy on the Sarah Silverman program, but most recently has been acting as Johnny Conomos on The Peacemaker and Suicide Squad 2021. Oh, come on. Really? He's credited as voicing housekeeping Cosby, but I couldn't actually find that character speaking, so I'm guessing it got cut out to be under five minutes. In another smart move, they got Rob Schraub, one of the creators of Channel 101, to voice entertainment Cosby and moral support Cosby. Remember, boy, I am your father. Savan Najarian directed along with Justin Roiland, as well as did animation and editing. Their friend Stephen Shun did the character art to boot. They basically scan characters in after drawing them on paper, would edit them in Photoshop, and then manipulate them in After Effects. A really formidable group of artists to be sure, and Roiland would even liken it to his own little animation studio back then. Spoiler alert, but the first episode does end with Curiosity Cosby accidentally creating the 10th Cosby. But this 10th Cosby turns out to have supernatural abilities. I am Cosby number 10, Data Analysis Cosby. So Mitchell was now compelled to make more superpowered Cosbys, and this left the show in a little bit of a cliffhanger. That would work in their favor since, you know, the audience would be voting on which shorts would be coming back. This plan succeeded with House of Cosbys winning first place the first month it was shown. This momentum would actually roll over into the following months with the second and third episodes of House of Cosby's also winning first place at Channel 101. These episodes would hold the same tone as the first, while just upping the insanity ante. Like, instead of just being a House of Cosby's, they are now at the Cosby Compound to fit all of the Cosby clones that have been created. And uh, Comedy Central totally stole that logo. Just saying. And as the amount of Cosby's increased, so did the amount of voice actors for them. Most notably was Tim Heidecker of Tim and Eric, who voiced Mood Swing Cosby. See? I'm stupid because I'm not important. Boo -hoo -hoo -hoo. And the Lonely Island Boys provided the voices for the Cosby team Triosby. I'm flapping my wings with shame! How could we have let this happen? Wait, we feel like it's our fault this all happened. We weren't fast enough. We weren't strong enough. No, stop. You guys don't understand. This is the best thing that's ever happened to me. Some details I especially liked about these follow-up episodes were touches like altering the intro sequence to include more of the new main Cosbys. And the alternate version of the outro song was a bop in the third episode. If I had to critique one thing, it might be the voice for Cosbyette. Instead of just having a female do a Cosby impression, she sounds like this. Snap, snap, snap! Mitchell, I love you too, honey child. That's about my only gripe, though. That is until episode four comes around. You see, around the time of episode four, Roiland would fall ill with bronchitis, leaving him to turn in a lackluster performance. You can somewhat tell that data analysis Cosby doesn't have the same oomph to him. Ah, Mitchell, hello. I, I'm sorry I'm missing the barbecue. From the get-go in the episode, things do seem alright, though. The big first chunk is centered around the Cosby team Triosby and is a continuation of what happened in the third episode. The latter half of the episode is where things take a sharp turn, though. Albeit a fascinating turn. Just tell me if anything here sounds familiar to you. This is an intergalactic transmission receptor, fresh off the spaceship. Apparently it is able to receive TV transmissions from even the most distant planets throughout all of space. Seems a lot like that concept I've heard of before from Rick and Morty, huh? I just upgraded our cable package with programming from every conceivable reality. Yeah, the House of Cosby's created the interdimensional television from Rick and Morty. Although this is an extreme prototype of what we're used to on Rick and Morty. Some of the gags were decently funny, but others were like, okay... What is this? The sun! No, it is not the sun. The moon! A piece of bread! 
I'm assuming that Roland's bronchitis forced them to change directions so that the episode wouldn't be oddly short. And maybe they'd even reuse some of their previously created shorts for these channel programs. And you know, voila! Interdimensional television! But that's just a theory. A game theory! While it didn't win first, the episode still did qualify Roiland and his team to proceed onward. However, a whirlwind of misfortune would soon seal the House of Cosby's fate. After not only being dethroned to their number one spot, Roiland actually had a close friend pass away in a car accident. This understandably traumatized him at the time, as it would anyone. I'd probably need to go recover a while, too. Aside from that, the team had just been generally feeling burnout from, you know, having to create these shorts for three months while still trying to work jobs and find gigs on the side. It's not like the House of Cosby's was making them any money. But the most damning nail in the coffin was the cease and desist letter that Channel 101's website runner and founder, Dan Harmon, would receive from Bill Cosby's lawyer. It read, Dear Sirs, we are counsel for Mr. William H. Cosby Jr. We have just learned that you offer a deeply offensive animated film that you created, entitled House of Cosby's. As you are certainly aware, none of you are licensed or in any way authorized to use Mr. Cosby's name, voice, or likeness. Therefore, we demand that you immediately cease and desist from any use of our client's name, voice, and likeness, including the development and distribution of the House of Cosby series. Very truly yours, John P. Schmidt. Bummed would be an absolute understatement for me if I was in Roiland's shoes. One of your comedy idols is sending a threatening letter your way. That sucks. And God, is it always ironic to me when a comedian gets hurt over something that's supposed to be funny? It's like, wow, way to take a joke, man. You're supposed to be the funny guy here. But then again, I guess there's way worse qualities about Cosby, right? Harmon initially complied removing the videos, but then put them back up once he realized how ridiculous the lawyer's request was. The videos had already been re-uploaded on multiple other websites. It's not like them removing them was going to take them off the internet. Royland even clapped back later on, writing an unsanctioned fifth episode to House of Cosby's. He didn't create it, but he did pass the script on to a couple of his friends who made it. It would begin with a normal intro sequence until it would start to glitch out. Then it would cut to Royland reading a bit of the cease and desist letter he got. Then afterwards, the intro sequence would replay with the word Cosby bleeped out and the faces of Cosby's being poorly censored. The remaining two minutes were crudely drawn MS Paint characters pleasuring each other. It definitely wasn't Bill Cosby and his lawyer, though. Hello there. My name is Bill Cosby. Well, hello there, friend. What is your name? I'll tell you what it isn't. It definitely isn't John P. Schmidt who wrote the cease and desist letter to Justin Roiland. Something tells me Roiland was wasted when he drafted this. This downward spiral would have a silver lining, though. The press from this Cosby cease and desist letter actually garnered Justin Roiland, a then 23-year-old unemployed guy, some media attention. Subsequently, he signed with the United Talent Agency, who represented people like Jim Carrey, Will Ferrell, and Ben Stiller, along with a bunch of other talented comedy writers. Along with landing an agent, it wouldn't be long before Roiland and Harmon would begin teaming up. In protest to the cease and desist letter, Roiland had actually come up with a parody cartoon of Back to the Future called The Adventures of Doc and Marty. You might have heard this one by now. My kite's in the tree, Doc. I can't. I hate this stupid tree. I'm so sad. Don't be sad, Marty. We'll go back in time and we'll make sure that your kite doesn't get stuck in the tree. And as Roiland was working on it, he became enthralled with these voices he was doing for Doc and Marty. So he dropped the whole protest thing and just opted to make another funny cartoon instead. Dan Harmon would enjoy the cartoon so much that he actually requested another installment to promote Channel 101's Creative Freedoms, which you know is very appropriate given their history. Seven years later, these voices for Doc and Marty would be used for Rick and Morty, respectively. What do you, th what do you think of this flying vehicle, Morty? I built it out of stuff I found in the garage. Yeah, Rick, it's it's great. Doc and Marty have even appeared in Rickdiverse, a hidden object game that takes place entirely on Instagram. Hey, there's even a House of Cosby's reference, too. And that's how Rick and Morty came out of a parody cartoon of Bill Cosby, of all people. The shorts have definitely not aged perfectly since, you know, they're about Bill Cosby, but if you're a fan of Justin Roiland, it is a treat to see his work when he was so fresh. Let me know what you think of House of Cosby's in the comments, or if you want any House of Cosby characters to appear in Rick and Morty. Probably not, um, most, most of them are Cosby. Uh, Mitchell could appear, that'd be fun. 
Hey, you could be drinking buddies with Rick. I'll get started on the spec script while you guys leave a like on this video, please. That'll really help me out. And subscribe if you haven't. I see a bunch of you aren't subscribed. It really does help me out supremely. Hey, and let me know what other cartoons or shows that you want me to talk about. But yeah, I'll see you guys soon. Peace!